Did you know that Shadows of the Empire can actually play in 16 by 9 natively? I found this out a couple days ago and I'm still blown away. It's been well documented that Star Wars Shadows of the Empire has an in-game debug menu that requires a lot of hassle to use, but once you do unlock that, it has the entire game to your disposal. This goes from graphical settings like turning on and off, anti-aliasing, textures, fog, aspect ratio, and we haven't even begun to scrape the surface of this. And the best part is that if you have a Nintendo 64 cartridge, you can do it right now. So how do you do it? How does the debug menu work? And it's so weird, mind you. Go into your Nintendo 64 menu, create a file and call it Wampa Stompa, and it is case sensitive, and I'll leave it down below so you know how to do it yourself. Make sure that the save is on medium, then launch into whatever level you'd like. This is where the tricky part comes in. To activate the code, press your start button. Hold all of the C buttons, then press L, R, and Z, and D-pad left. Hold all of those together, and then you have to tilt the control stick left. When you hear, that means you've done it correctly. If you're looking like this, that means you're doing it correctly. I mean, that's how I had to do it, but it's I'm digressing. Do that five times, and then the menu should open up to your disposal. From here, the entire game is opened up to you, FOV, turn on and off fog, but we're gonna really deep dive into this. If you accidentally go out of the start menu and come back in, just do the whole process once and then you should be able to go in. So now that you have the whole menu option open to you, what can you do? Aside from graphics and aspect ratio, which I'll touch upon in a little bit in its own thing, you have some pretty basic ones that you can do. You can give yourself max ammo. So for example, if you wanted to have 100 disruptors and just launch that however you want to, you can do that and then you'll die. <laughs> this also works for the other items like Pulse or Seekers, and it just really is nice where if you wanted to start the beginning levels with as much ammo as you can and just kind of mess around with it, it's a pretty cool thing that you can do. You could also have invincibility that you could turn on whenever you'd like to, which is a nice touch, of course. Level select is pretty cool. You don't have to go into the menu to even do this. You can actually go back, forward, or restart the level anytime that you'd like. This is great for people like me who like to record levels because sometimes you don't want to play through the entire level and you just really need that specific moment. And what's really great about these debugs is that you can go back and forth to whatever levels that you like, record the footage, or for people who simply just want to play that level, you can do that without playing through the whole thing. So it's nice to have that variety. If you want to explore that level, go back. Or if you want to just die, that's an option. You can just die. There's an also no clipping section, or it's called Wall Ghost. You can actually get, go out of bounds of certain parts of the level, and you don't really necessarily need a jetpack to go out of this, but if you just kind of move through the walls, you kind of clip out. Now, keep in mind, you are in the boundaries of what is not intended for you. So, you know, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen and you can easily dive, fall, or do whatever that you'd like. Just like right here, where I just fell into a whole bunch of robots and died. <laughs> Graphical settings, that's the next thing I want to touch upon, and you have quite a lot of options here. Textures is going to be the most obvious one that I think a lot of people will want to try. You can toggle on and off textures, leaving only the polygons in white behind. This is very cool because it allows you to explore what the game was before textures were added on, and what was the developer's perspective when creating some of these levels. You could see how expansive some of the polygons and levels are designed. And in order to kind of hide that draw distance or some of those features, you know, they added fog or they added limited enemies in order to kind of really fill in the world or take out what was necessary. So it's very cool to see that developers, you know, really tried to go down this aspect. You could also see the quality of the textures and what isn't. So it just really puts your mind into the eyes of the developer. This is a great segue into the fog, which you can toggle on and off. Like I mentioned before, it does a great job at hiding certain enemies or giving some depth to certain places that weren't supposed to, or even atmosphere. When you do take that off, you get to see like here in Shizor's palace, 
how that blue fog is taken off and you can just see the entire uh, draw distance of the level and it just looks pretty bland and you can see how fog is used here as atmosphere and to create more depth into the level and it could even hide some enemies you didn't notice and unveiling that you can see some of the limitations the game has it's just a big room with maybe three or four enemies that you can explore and putting that into perspective it does make the game a bit more rudimentary and kind of bland when you think about it but it's amazing to see these little tricks like fog how it's used to create a bigger illusion and a bigger level so those are just little tricks that developers like to use in order to create that anti-aliasing is also turned on by default but you can turn that off go into the debug menu turn that off and you have a vast amount of sharper pixels that weren't there before. Now mind you, the Nintendo 64 natively has anti-aliasing on on most of its games, but turning it off, you get to really see much sharper pixels, and you can see why anti-aliasing is actually important. That way you see more of the polygons presently than rather the sharp pixels that are used to create the polygons. Also keep in mind, if you want to increase frame rate and make some levels more playable like an Org Mantel with the train, you can turn anti-aliasing off and give you a little bit more of uh, frame rate, which is not much to say on the degree, but the fact that you have that headroom on the Nintendo 64 is pretty damn cool. So it's an option that you can tinker around with, or hey, you know, turn the textures off altogether and anti-aliasing and have one of the weirdest experiences you'll have in gaming. We know that Donkey Kong 64 and Banjo-Kazooie have native 16 by 9 ratio, but you can also have that here. Go into the debug menu and you have an option called aspect, which changes the aspect ratio. I think default is about 1.33. For 16 by 9, I found that 1.66 or 72 around that area seemed to be a good middle ground to how it is. Unfortunately, you can't put it perfectly to how it is. It's You kind of have to do it by eye but I found this to be the most aesthetically pleasing, at least for 16 by nine. And unfortunately the HUD is not gonna be scaled to that and that makes sense, but this does make the aspect ratio that dash is in much more easier to fill out that 16 by nine. So remember to turn full screen on whatever scaler or TV that you have and then do the aspect ratio and that'll make it much easier to scale it however you'd like. And I do have some last remarks that I wanted to touch upon before I finish it off. It is very possible that while you can skip certain levels, you will also have crashes in others. I was trying to skip the sewer level to go into Shizor's palace, but the game just crashed. I mean, when you're messing with debug menus, expect to have these little discrepancies and uh, annoyances when you're messing around with that. Certain levels won't function correctly as well right here in the asteroid belt where the space is supposed to be black, but it's changed to navy blue. It's, it's weird, I don't know how, why this happens, but when I turned on the debug menu, it has this enabled, so I don't know why, but it might break certain elements in certain levels. The debug menu also has a new option in the menu called Game Secrets, allowing you to discover certain game secrets in the game. One of the most notable ones is if you crouch down for 15 seconds, you gain invincibility. I don't even think the PC has these kind of options either. You can turn on the resolutions or lower it if you'd like to, but in the terms of aspect ratio, fog, and all that, I don't think you have that much control like you do on the 64. I was pretty impressed with that. And to see that if you have a copy of the 64, you can do it right now. So that's a great option. But what do you guys think? How do you like this debug menu for Shadows of the Empire? Is this one of your favorites? Or maybe you have other games on consoles that have fantastic debug menus. I'd love to learn about them. Let me know in the comments below to see what you'd like. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I want to thank all the people who support the channel, such as the Patreon members, as well as the YouTube membership. Thank you guys so much. If you want to see other videos that I do, I have a list of videos right here that showcases what I do on this channel. Thank you guys so much. I really appreciate it, and I'll see you very soon.